Hey guys, what's going on? I am King George. I am a ex Rainbow Six professional player. Um, I won the Rainbow Six Six Invitational, but I'm more well known for now as a Rainbow Six streamer and YouTuber. One of the common mistakes I see a lot of new players make is a lack of droning and having the proper crosshair placement when you're following those drones in. So you want to acquire that information via having a teammate drone and by placing your crosshairs in the right spot and getting ready to react once that happens. Utilizing the tools in Rainbow Six Siege that are available to you is really important. And then using things like Aim Lab to actually practice acquiring those shots afterwards to get the kill. So there's the question of what is Rainbow Six Siege? At an extremely basic level, Rainbow Six Siege is a game of five attackers and five defenders. Defender's goal is to sit inside the building, defend the bomb objective so that it goes off, and the attacker's goal is to enter the building and plant the diffuser and diffuse the bomb before it goes off. Maps are all destructible, so all the walls and stuff in the game for the most part are all generally destructible as well as the floors. Some of the walls are hard, so there's certain types of operators that need to break those walls. You as a defender, when you're on your team, can set up the maps how you want them to be set up. So you actually reinforce the walls where you want them to be reinforced so that they're hard walls and they need to be destroyed by hard breachers. Let's talk about your settings when you play Rainbow Six Siege. So when you're playing the game, obviously something that's important, going through like audio and stuff, obviously you don't want to have sound that's way too loud. I like to put um, the sound down a little bit and turn my actual Windows PC volume up a bit. Having, if possible, 240 hertz monitor is always great. This monitor actually does go up to 1440p, but I have it locked at 1080 just so I can get that higher FPS personally. I play on 16.9. Um, a lot of people will play on 16.10, and I would always really recommend trying at least to run 90 FOV if you can. Under graphics, I run higher settings, generally speaking. I would probably say to turn these down a little bit unless you have a very good computer. Obviously, FPS is king over everything, so having higher FPS can lead you to win games and stuff like that. For sensitivity, for your mouse settings and stuff, this just takes time. Generally, what I try to do is I try to make it so that when I like flick to random objects and I can acquire them, that's like my natural sensitivity. So I actually use the advanced settings for sensitivity as well. I do enable mouse scrolling. I pretty much do all advanced gadget deployment. I actually use toggle aim, which is this is the only video game I use toggle aim for. For most people, I'd actually recommend using hold though. All of these are really just personal preference. People will tell you one way or the other, but it's things that you have to use for yourself and actually um, attempt. People will often ask, how do you find your actual sensitivity? A good way to actually do it that, I, that I've kind of noticed is playing um, like either grid shot or spider shot is pretty good. So you go under the training tab and you can change your settings over here under controls, whatever video game you want. So we're going to be doing Rainbow Six Siege. Basically, the goal of all of this is so that when you're actually playing here, and you're flicking, you're flicking to the object, right? So this is a trick that I use for any game that I play. So say I'm ADSing in here. When I flick up, I should be flicking to the object, right? I should be flicking, I shouldn't be going over, I shouldn't be going under, I shouldn't be, you know, down to the side or something like that. It should always be right on the object. So bam, 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 bam. See, I'm not even, I'm not even actually shooting, but I'm just like acquiring the acquiring the target over and over again. So I can consistently do that over and over and over again, going from target to target to target. Um, and that should be the goal of kind of how you do that. So it's really easy to do that in grid shot. And once again, you could change all of these settings and stuff on the fly as well too, just by by heading over here. Also grid shot when you're playing it as well, it'll report back if you're over flicking or under flicking. So you can actually do runs through it as well. And you do you can actually shoot through the targets and stuff too. But yeah, it'll tell you when your sensitivity is off and it will help you find your sensitivity as well. Let's talk about operators and how they change the way that Siege is played. And there's actually quite a few different types of operators, but the main ones that you'll actually end up going through are hard breachers, soft breachers, roamers, and catchers. So we'll start with hard breachers, which are on attack. Um, there's thermite, which is right here, Habana, uh, Maverick, and Ace, as well as some operators, uh, just like for Zero, for example, have a hard breaching gadget, which kind of looks like this, but they're not really considered like hard breachers overall. So it's those main four operators. Basically, every round you want to have one of those operators. They are used to destroy the walls that defenders uh, put up and reinforce that are uh, hard walls. Soft breachers can destroy um, soft walls. Uh, a lot of operators have soft breaching ability, as well as every gun in the game can, can obviously go through a wall, and same with some melees as well. Uh, so the main ones are, are Sledge, Ash, Buck, Jackal has a secondary shotgun, uh, which is useful as well, Zofia, 
Mara is a shotgun as well. A lot of these other operators, you can use Flores drones to blow holes in the floor. And of course, many of the operators in the game have breaching charges as well. Um, like Ash has her soft breaching launcher as well as a breaching gadget. When it comes to roamers and catchers, uh, so there's two main catchers in the game. The biggest one is Wamai, and the main one actually is Jaeger. So Jaeger was the OG original one, and Wamai is the newer one. Basically, their goal is to catch projectiles that are thrown by operators with grenades such as sledge or, or catching ash charges, uh, etc. So, so the breaching charges that they have. Jaeger is also a really good roamer, so some operators actually can cover both aspects as well. Kind of similar to two where, like, say for example, Habana, she actually has a hard breaching ability as well as breaching charges, so she can kind of cover both. Jaeger is definitely that way as well. He's a really good roamer. Valkyrie is a really good informational operator, so she can obtain information with her cameras that she throws, as well as roaming around the map. Vigil's good because he can cloak and, and roam as well. Generally, you want to have the faster operators that are, are a little bit quicker on their feet, so there's a difference in armor rating. So Vigil is a one armor, three speed, whereas, say, for example, Mira is a one speed, three armor. So the higher armor ratings generally sit on sight, whereas the faster operators will generally run around. Some good beginner operators though that you really can't go wrong with sledge thatcher ash thermite twitch you know these are all like these are the five basic operators that come with it, pretty much every copy of the game for the defenders smoke's always really good because you need to have remodeling of sight and little soft breach destruction of your own stopping of hard breaching gadgets with mute and bandit is always great obviously you need catchers as well doc and rook are really easy operators for beginners as well because you just drop your armor you can't really do much wrong with rook there's obviously every operator serves its purpose in rainbow six siege as well Obviously, practice is essential to getting better if you actually want to rank up, and that's why Aim Lab is the perfect tool for that. We're going to actually head over to Aim Lab right now. It is the perfect aim training tool because of the fact that it's actually partnered with Rainbow Six Siege and transfers all of your lean values, run values, recoil values. Everything is transferred over into Aim Lab as if it was Rainbow Six Siege, so it's actually the perfect aim trainer we're actually going to play the clubhouse entry which is over here so if you go to training siege and clubhouse entry it's right here um and it's just really useful we're just going to be going through this much slower than i normally would but um just to kind of show you things where you can actually lean correctly um and check out like all this common spots that uh people would potentially be sitting in your ranked games so this is all built um off of the actual map and design so as, as, as you can see here, there's just where all the people would normally be sitting. So this is actually clubhouse upstairs and master bedroom. Um, the maps are actually remade. So it's pretty sweet uh, how they do this. And it's kind of cool. They will actually, the targets will shoot back at you if you don't shoot them in time. And it'll just guide you through and you can do multiple run throughs. Uh, obviously doing these is, is going to help you a ton. Uh, we just went through it kind of slow, but there's tons of different um, exercises to help you out. We're going to head over now to the Rainbow Six Siege new combine that they came out with, um, which is meant to help you test it and train a few different aspects of your aim. So one we're going to go over specifically is called Switch Track. Uh, so the whole uh, idea of it is to track different objects that are moving around your screen. Um, so they just kind of bob up. You follow them around. Uh, this is actually one of the things that I was talking about when we first started speaking about the topic, but it's to follow these different targets around the screen. I'm just kind of giving an example of how it's done because ideally you would want say something that was here on this wall if you were coming around this corner you'd want to be holding this angle so when your teammate is droning you in and giving the information of there's a guy sitting in the corner around the wall that you can pre-fire that person aiming either crouch level height level so ideally they would tell you like crouch level there's a person aiming there um etc but yeah it's just meant to help you practice that little aspect of your aim and help you practice your tracking Sound in Rainbow Six Siege is very, very, very difficult to actually start getting used to. The goal is to actually help you practice and, and hear uh, the sounds in the in Siege. So in Siege, sound is everything. Sound, while inconsistent because it has to propagate through multiple different objects, is a make or break in this game. If you can actually tell where people are coming from, you obviously have the chance to pre-fire them, having good crosshair placement and good aim. And, uh, and when your gunfights in, therefore when your games. So it kind of gives you like a little idea of how to play and um, it's kind of how it is in Siege as well too, where you hear specific audio cues if someone's walking over a different type of object. Um, and yeah, it'll help you out quite a bit. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and don't forget, Aim Lab is on sale for the low, low price of 
completely free. Just check below in the description. It's a completely free download. Make sure you like and subscribe uh, for more of these videos and let us know in the comments what guide you guys want to see next. And thank you very, very much to AimLab for making such an awesome product.